G'day, welcome to another episode of Armagen's Podcast. I'm your host, Captain P, with my lovely brothers and co-hosts, Tinas and Joe. We're here for another weekly episode to have a bit of fun, frivolity, discuss a bit of politics, a bit of sports, a bit of entertainment news, and just keep you informed as we have another good week in this wonderful year of 2023. So Tinas, Joe, how was your week and how was your weekend? Great weekend, brother. How are you? Good to be here. Good, 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 good. bro. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. A, a better weekend. No Premier League going on, so we will all <laughs> celebrate that. <laughs> no rants today, so <laughs> we can talk about some other <laughs> fun stuff. No ranting. <laughs> so let's get into it. So let's uh let's 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 talk about a few you know of course football was still on but a bit different type of football it was all international fixtures we had some uefa european championship qualifiers we had the south america world cup qualifiers and then we had the africa african uh, nations playing for the upcoming africa cup of nations which will be happening in january 2024 the final games so we'll start there there was a shock result uh the champion senegal drew with rwanda um people were pretty surprised with that result and senegal were playing at home so let's see how it goes previous winner zami again shock result drew with the Komo. so and then the last game for the weekend i believe is cameroon versus burundi which will be happening overnight <laughs> so gents are you excited for the africa cup of nations I know sometimes we might miss the games because of the, our time difference, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, yeah. To be honest, I, 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 haven't watched, uh, I haven't watched any of the games. I was not even uh, aware that we are, we are having games. After a couple of minutes. <laughs> That's how switched up I was, man. <laughs> You're only yeah. focusing on the Premier League? Man. Premier League, bro. Come on, man. Yeah. Still a little bit disappointed because Zimbabwe is not, uh, you know, coming in from the ban. Oh yeah, Zimbabwe is not eligible to play. I think all our mm. all our games are forfeited uh, because of yeah. the current ban uh, with the uh, Afcon um, Confederation of African Football. So yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Um, it'll be interesting uh, competition, I believe. Uh, the goalkeeper for Man U, um, I think they've made a amends with the Cameroon national team, Onana. I think he'll be playing. So oh, that's it'll good. Be, it'll be interesting, I think. Again, for Liverpool, Liverpool lose their star man for a month in uh, Mo Salah. So it's going to be an interesting Premier League season when some of these uh, big <laughs> African players go and play uh, in the AFCON uh, competition. What's any of the Premier League um, stars playing in the African teams? Do they make any 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 dents? Uh, look, I think uh, looking at the results, I believe the Egyptian one. I think Mo Salah. I think he had an assist in that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, looking at the Nigerian one, uh, not exactly Premier League player, but you've got. A serious top scorer from last season, Victor Oshiman. He scored a hat trick. So Nigeria is looking good as well. So a few European teams, I said the Napoli, the uh, previous Serie A winners, are going to lose their top striker going to the AFCON. So there'll be a few teams under the pump. <laughs> I think yeah. maybe people who might be happier, people in the Saudi League, because I believe the Saudi League has a break during that period. So oh, some of wow. the players like your Rihards, your Mane, they will be all right. But the Premier League team, some of the Premier League teams will be suffering a bit, particularly Everton. I think Everton will lose one of their key players who will go to the AFCON. Uh, I think Alex Iwobi, and they're facing relegation as well. So <laughs> it's a hard road for some of these teams. I think that's why a lot of Premier League teams, they don't like this uh, AFCON tournament. Isn't, isn't it too early to be talking about relegation? Ah, come on. <laughs> Everton will be out, man. Anyway, we're talking about Afcon at the moment. <laughs> Moving on. We European qualifiers, yeah. big result overnight. Um, Portugal, 9 0 versus Luxembourg. Uh, um, I think we'll look at the lineup of that team. We'll see if uh, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo wasn't playing. Uh, some people are saying the team is much more free flowing without Ronaldo in the team anymore. Uh, yeah. With. Uh, 
Yeah, a lot of, a lot of young players. You've got your Ruben Diaz, Man City player, uh, Bernardo Silva, uh, Rafael Liao, AC Milan. And then another shock result was Ukraine drawing with England. Um, <laughs> again, <laughs> the English press wasn't happy with that, particularly with <laughs> Gareth Southgate. But, I, but I, have, I, have a, I have a question, though. Yeah. We, we we always talk about, I mean, there's a lot, always a lot of disappointment about England, but do they really have the caliber to, to, to play, to, to really go out there and play international football? I mean, I looking at the I fact look- that most most of the best players in the UK or in the Premier League are not even English. But you can, you can have the argument that in the top five, three of them will be, you know, English players. So in terms of the spread of players, I think they had the golden generation with your Rio Ferdinand's, John Terry's. Those were top players, your Paul Scholes, your Lampads, but it's about the coaching because the press mm. will try and shoehorn all these players. You have to fit them in. And as a coach, you're always under scrutiny and pressure, but it really needs a coach who, you know, who doesn't give an F about a lot of things yeah. and just puts the best people in the best positions. Like I think yes. Ericsson, he had to, because Scholes was a good player at Man U, he had to put Paul Scholes on the left wing to fit him to play with Gerard and Lampard. If he yeah. was a good coach, he would have just dropped one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. yeah. I think I because of the popularity with the English Premier League, you find that naturally we are inclined to think UK is better, you know, when it comes to soccer. But at the end of the day, like you said, when we look at it granularly, most of the players, they're not from the UK. Yeah. So it boils down to what uh, Leslie has been saying, that the coach will be the key to them winning the the, the cup. Yeah, it's just but, like in this scenario, you've got some good players, you know, you've got your Rashfords, your Phil Foldens, yeah. but they're not starting. You've got good midfielders who are not starting, you know, James Ward Prowse. You start yeah. Jordan Henderson playing in a public. Yes, look, Saudi, they've per- bought a lot of players, but let's be honest, it's a public. Um, mm-hmm. It's not one of the best. You've got Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire. I know we spoke about <laughs> fucking uh-huh. Harry Maguire last uh-huh. week, but he can't even start for Man U. Um, yeah. and he's starting for England. Make that make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do, do they, they always seem to want to have uh, an English coach? Um, I mean, apart from Ericsson, who 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 coached England? Who was not an English coach? They always seem to want to have English coach. I, the question is, are English coaches that good when you compare them to other international coaches? I think they tried the internationals with Ericsson and Fabio Capello. That didn't work out well. Um, but were they were they the right coaches though? I don't think they were the right international coaches. I think if they if they wanted, they could have gone for someone like Roberto Mancini. Uh, he's now coaching Saudi Arabia. He won the European Championship. Can I put in Pep Guardiola there? But do you think Pep will leave Man City anytime soon? <laughs> his boys, I think, I think his, his um... boys, his boys are in the senior management. The, yeah. His boys are there, so uh, unless maybe I don't know how to pronounce it. What's his name? Uh, Tichi Breckenstein resigns, or one of the mm-hmm. the chairman or the CEO resigns, then oh. maybe Pep will step away. But it's all his boys who he gets along with. Yeah, and yeah, I, th- I think I think England needs a coach who has got a bit more, like you said, um, they need a, a coach who's got a bit more pizzazz, someone who's who's willing to get in there. I wouldn't quite say are you saying, the, you want the to Jose Mourinho's. <laughs> you, want, you, want you want someone with balls. I think England just needs someone with balls. Like a yeah, Mourinho. yeah, yeah. You need somebody just who drop, just drop who, people, man. Who will defend himself for the for the for the for the um for the for decisions? Better, yeah, for the decisions that he's making. Who we'll say, listen, if you want me to coach, this is how I'm going to do it. Because a lot of like you like you were saying, Joe, mm-hmm. a lot of people have uh, an insight on the English football. So it, it, it almost feels like um, that transcends into the national team as well, that a lot of people have insight into it and they want to have their say into what goes on, into how that team is played. But to be honest, um, if you're going to put a coach, then allow at least allow him some play into choosing what he or what how he would want to play the team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But look, with Gerd Southgate, 
um the pundits wouldn't really you know attack him because he's a mate um someone who they you know but he just a, he just looks like a softy yeah he, he, he doesn't he, make uh doesn't make the hard decisions so he doesn't even talk loud enough when he's talking <laughs> <laughs> so yeah let's so, let's see how we go uh the table standings in the in the group uh france in their group they're currently unbeaten for qualifiers england mm-hmm. again unbeaten so people will say they've got 14 points at uh, 13 points they are unbeaten in their group uh other leaders are belgium i think that's another disappointment in the European uh, sector, they had a good golden generation that was wasted. You had your Vincent companies, your Lukaku's, your Hazard, Hazards. The two hazards. Yeah, so that was a, another disappointing golden generation. Uh, Portugal, totally unbeaten again. So let's see how we go. Uh, Germany, Germany sacked their their coach <laughs> after losing to Japan. Uh, but he was the coach who was dominating with Bayern Munich. So sometimes international football is different than club football, man. Yeah, I, I think I saw a headline that was saying um, players like Rudiger. Rudiger, the other goal that they scored, Rudiger actually took his time hmm. to start running back. And and that opportunity ended up being a goal or something like that. So is there is there discipline issues in that team? I think there was a bit of tension in there. I think having Kai Havertz play as a striker when there are other better strikers in the Bundesliga, I think that's a bit of, <laughs> you know, mm. the, some of these coaches want to be a bit, you know, too smart. For yeah. <laughs> They want to be the smartest person in the room with some of these decision makings that they make mm. in terms of their team. Who would you have put in place of Kai Havertz? Uh, look, there's uh, Timo Werner. There's uh, this other guy, Full Krieg. Of course, he may not be as you know fluid. He's a bit of a lanky striker, but you need a focal point there. And Havertz, you know, he can't hold up the ball. Uh, he's struggling with Arsenal. I, th- I think these are the sub type of things where you've got another coach who's just picking his favorites. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Havertz is struggling at Arsenal. Um, you know, he might get dropped in the next game uh, for Arsenal. Uh, if Ateta is thinking right, so yeah, these are some of the decisions which are there. I wonder. I wonder what's going on with Germany. Germany has uh, traditionally had uh, top top rated strikers. You know, I, I wonder what what's happening with them now. Yeah, you know, generations change, uh, football changes. I think you know people are now focusing on the midfield after Spain's tiki taka, where oh, you know oh. the midfield could win you the game. But again, football is now evolved now, so everyone is going to try and look for their own. Erling Haaland and all that yeah. stuff now going oh. back to the big striker who who knock in 60 50 goals so that's yes. the evolution of football um yeah. Italy Italy might not well make the euros Joe you wanted to say something oh no I wanted to say uh, that's when England would wish they had a uh, Haaland on their side <laughs> it was one of theirs Oh, but they've got Harry Kane. Harry Kane is a good striker, but if if, well, if you can't if, compare them, you can't compare him to Haaland. You, can, yeah? you can't compare him, but I'm saying if England had a had a better attacking midfield, right? Yeah. You choose people in form, you'd release Harry Kane a bit more. Yeah. Now Harry Kane has to drop deep to fling passes left, right, and center, which doesn't really work. It doesn't make sense. I watched the highlights. Yes. The gameplay was horrible versus yeah. Ukraine. So the coach is crap. Yeah, of course he's crap. Yeah, man. <laughs> Moving to South American football, um, for their FIFA World Cup qualifiers, you've got Argentina, which run against Ecuador, Uruguay against Chile, uh, Brazil. Talking about Brazil, Neymar broke Pele's record of seventy-nine goals, international goals. Um, my thoughts on this one is: I think Neymar has always been built for the personal accolades, not for the team accolades. I'll open the floor to you, gentlemen. I know both of you. I know Tina's likes me and Neymar. He's a Neymar <laughs> defender. <laughs> um, yeah, but 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 doesn't that because um, obviously he doesn't make um, he doesn't make that um, by himself. He's working as a team player mm-hmm. who is who has the opportunity to create after he's been given. And we're talking about strikers just now. When you're yes. a striker. You need to be able to to say okay, even if it's a half a chance, mm-hmm. be able to create a, a, a goal out of that. 
That's what yes. strikers are supposed. Traditionally, that's what strikers are supposed to do. So yeah. I think with with the way he handles the ball, it's easy for him to create create goals out of even like I said half chances. So I wouldn't say it's an individual effort or he's just um, aiming for individual accolades. But I would I would, I would say it's, it's a team effort. It's a team effort for him, and he's just lucky he's had the support to. To, to be able to do that. Yeah, but look at look at all his success. He's always been successful. He's not been the main man. Barcelona, he wasn't the main man. Uh, PSG, he wasn't the main man. It was Mbappe. And when he's supposed to go to Brazil, where he's supposed to carry the team to the next level, he's failed. It's always been about him. Yeah, but you're, just, you're saying he wasn't the main man. <laughs> I think it comes back to personal branding, you know? He, he was always been a brand. That's what I'm saying. Even when he was yeah. playing at uh, PSG, it was all about Neymar, you know? Yeah. Get the ball. So it, he wants to dribble four or five players. Yeah. So he, it boils down to the, you know, uh, the brands that are actually working behind the scenes to try and push because you find that uh, the news is crafted in a way to praise him. He, in a sense that he's always a celebrity out there. But guys, Despite... we've been talking about we were talking about coaches. Yes. Being able to make decisions. So I was saying in all these teams, um those coaches have not been able to to stand their ground and say, listen, this is not how we're playing. We're supposed to play like this. Is that what we're saying? No, no, no. no. Because he... if he has done yeah, but, that but, in all these teams that you're yeah, talking but you, about. But you then... have to remember that some of these players have got player power. And these teams, as, as Joe is alluding, about the brands, you know, some of these football clubs. Let's go to his football form, then we'll go back to the national record. His mm-hmm. football form, particularly with PSG, mm-hmm. was to brand PSG to a wider community. Yes. So he had a lot of leeway because it was Neymar Jr. But he has not fulfilled the potential that he has. Look okay, at what let's, happened. Let's look at let's look at right now. Let's look at PSG. Yes. Yeah. If we if we take um Mbappe, mm. the role that he's playing right now, and if we had gave that role to Neymar, um what are his chances of success? Or would it be the same thing? Because I think uh, um Mbappe is doing what Neymar would have done anywhere else. Not necessarily, uh, because Neymar, not Neymar, Mbappe, he carried France all the way to that world, previous World Cup final. But those were personal efforts. Like, look at that Argentina match. All the goals he scored were an individual effort. That Where team he was created the that, opportunity. that team was playing F O football, and yeah. he was the only guy. And, and what I mean in Neymar, his mm. teams have played F O, and mm. he has not raised the level. He's only looked at about tapping in the goal, beating that record, having that little dribble move f- for the social media reels. But he hasn't so the raised difference, the bar. So the difference here is Mbappe would create the opportunity. And then uh, with Neymar, he uses opportunities very well. I think so. I think, I think the, 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 the old players who use um, the opportunity they have... Um, when we talk of Mbappe and uh, the, the 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 agent the World Cup, I feel it was a, you could be right. It was a personal thing that he wanted to do. You could see the determination that he had. Mm-hmm. He did not want to lose that match, and he took it upon himself to do it. Um, Neymar, I don't think he would do the same thing. If you give him the ball, he might score, but he's not going to be the one who's going to go all right. out, mm-hmm. hunt for the ball. You know, try to score the balls. Right. You wait for so you to I'll, give I'll, the ball. I'll rephrase my initial statement. I'll rephrase yeah. it to say that Neymar has not fulfilled his full potential. Yes, I agree. But in agreeing, I also want to add that I think it's because there was money put in front of him right from the onset. So he realized why play this good when I can get this money. Because when Neymar was younger, he played good football. And at some point, it went all bad. There was a time when it was a marvel to watch. When you say, wow. And then he started falling. He started doing these funny things. And then he started calling for the big checks. You know? Yeah, big box, man. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody told him, meh, 
play for the money, mate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because talent doesn't go too far. Too if far. You can't then, go over yeah. 40 years, you'll yeah. be done. So I, I think, yeah, I think money, the money that was put in front of him made him realize why not take the money? It's it's like it's like the players who went to play in uh um you know in China, the drug buzz, the who are you they they those guys went to there to, to get the money, solely mm-hmm. for the money. Even the guys who are going to play in Saudi Arabia, they went there for the money. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's another debate, but again, congrats to him, uh beating Pele's record, the legendary Pele, uh yeah. having seventy nine international goals, look scoring that amount. It, you know, it takes time um, and the consistency and longevity. So he's had the longevity. He started at a young age, but again, he's not fulfilled that potential. We can talk about the Copa America hosted in uh, Brazil when, uh-huh. you know, they could have won that Copa America, but he didn't rise to the party. We can talk about the um, 2014 World Cup when they lost uh, heavily against Germany, um, you know. So look, all the best to Neymar in Saudi Arabia and his crew. So again, that's a roundup of uh, world football, world sport. Um, NFL is back on. Uh, some good wins. If you had saw the highlights of the NFL, uh, Patrick Mahomes lost. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was happy with that. Kansas City Chiefs lost that match. Uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, overnight or during the day, our time in Australia, the Jets won. Uh, I think that's what everyone is watching. The New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers, they won. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, resounding victory. Big 40 new victory. So sports all over the place, left, right, and center. If you, sometimes you're not able to keep up. You just see some of these things popping up on your news feeds. And that's when you can catch up. So let's move into some uh, political discussion. Yeah. Ryan. All right, let's touch base in terms of um, an upcoming event which is happening here in Australia, which is the referendum um, for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice in Parliament. Uh, The date set by Prime Minister Albanese is the 14th of October, 2023. Remember, if you're a citizen, uh, vote (laughs) or you get fined. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you better go to the polling station and vote. Find your local polling station. I think they will be releasing that uh, information uh, through the AEC, the Australian Electoral Commission. So what is the voice which is being determined on the 14th? Australians will have a say in a referendum about whether to change the constitution to recognize the first people of Australia by establishing a body called the Aboriginal Tourist Strait Islander Voice. The voters will be asked to vote yes or no. The question on the ballot paper will be a proposed law to alter the constitution to recognize the first peoples of Australia by establishing an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander vote. Do you approve this proposed alteration? Right. I think looking at that statement, I'll open the floor to you, gentlemen. It's a very... Uh, emotive statement. Um, I don't think the First Peoples of Australia are not recognized. They're heavily recognized. Uh, you know, I think uh, Joe can allude, even myself, uh, <laughs> residing in the Northern Territory previously. You can see they're heavily rec- recognized even in sporting events. And I don't believe, this is my personal opinion, that establishing a voice will change the particular outcomes of the person or the individual on the ground. Maybe you just, can touch on uh, what what establishing a voice, what that would mean. So it's basically a separate arm of the government or having an individual body in the government, which relates basically only about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Is there anything wrong with that? What are the... There's already representatives in the parliament of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. Yeah, but what's wrong with with you having just a Why body of you having? What does the body do? It hasn't been explained. It's just yeah. a, it's just a body being created. Who is funding the body? It's the taxpayers. Look, How is it benefiting the locals? Look, look, I I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge regarding um, the way things have been with this um, with, with the natives of Australia, hmm. but. Um, I feel there's a bit of management that could be 
um, put there. Uh, and I feel personally, I feel uh, they are the type of people who want to be managed by peers rather than anybody else. So I I don't see a uh, a problem with having a group of people that are just there to look out for themselves um, and the people. Um, call it empowerment, if you will. Okay. They 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 obviously have a a way of looking at things that the rest of the world or the rest of Australia doesn't or won't um, uh, sort of understand. So have someone um, amongst their peers do that for them and they will translate what that is to everybody else. Yeah, so like Leslie has already been saying, that is already happening as we speak. They do have representatives uh, across the government structures, you see. Yeah, however, they are saying that the voice will allow the communities uh, or the indigenous uh, community to vote for who they want to be the members of the voice who will represent them uh, you know, in the cabinets and things like that. Uh, however, in saying that, uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, overcomplicating things that are already working because with the voice, uh, what are they trying to achieve that is not currently being achieved? That's the question. If it's uh, the funding for indigenous communities, there is a lot of funding that's going to indigenous communities. But from the grassroots, there is not much development happening within the indigenous community, which is not the problem with representation. It's the problem on the ground. Okay. So, so the representation will not change anything. And, and as Joe has alluded, the many funding bodies have been created Many funds have been poured into these communities. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> as we alluded, we've worked in some of these communities and we've seen that it is having someone sitting in Canberra is not going mm -hmm. to change an issue in local Tenant Creek. Yes. Okay. So, so maybe that's where we, um, maybe we need to speak on is this person simply going to be sitting in Canberra or? Is this a body of people that is going to be um, working closer with the people on the ground? Yeah, but that hasn't been disclosed. There's a lot of ambiguity mm -hmm. in okay. this in this voice thing, right? And with the latest polling, it now appears that the no vote, which was at a low 30%, uh, after the announcement of this date in the last few weeks, has 60% is now no. Okay. Because there's a lot of ambiguity to it. What is this body really going to do? Yeah. So there is need for a little bit more education around people and transparency on the actual uh, details of what's in that a referendum or in that, you know, a, those policy documents that they have used to develop the, the voice. So, so who here? Has mm -hmm. the task of, um, uh, uh, you know, um, deciding what that uh, task is going to look like. Who here is 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 deciding what that uh, board is going to look like? So that has already been done by the uh, what do they call them? Like the uh, a group of uh, you know political representatives, right? from both sides they decided that uh you know a long time ago i think it was 2007 correct me if i'm wrong and then they came up with the with the initial discussion and agreement bilateral agreement to come up with the with the voice and then there have been some uh, you know deliberation over the years and the first uh, Re, or the final report was put out in um, 2021. However, that final report, uh, I would say not many Australians or people know about that final report. It hasn't been marketed to the population 
to try and convince them about what the voice is up to. All we know about the voice is what the politicians like uh, uh, Pauline Hansen are saying in the parliament you know, uh, meetings. We haven't had the opportunity to see the actual final report, what their voice is about, and we're going to vote. So until they make an effort to actually market, promote the people's awareness to what's contained in what the voice is, then the referendum of voting can be postponed or put in you know, at a later date if people understand what they're voting for. It's quite interesting that uh, a document like that would have such ambiguity then. I wonder who is supposed to benefit in <laughs> with is that it, ambiguity. No, no, not talking about going crossing the left wing or right wing political divide. Mm. Uh, we know uh, the Labour government is more left leaning, you know, whatever opinions they've got. But this is what they want to do. It's now it's failing. They are calling 60% of Australians racist. In that 60%, there might be <laughs> African Australians, Asian Australians. Are they all yeah. racist against the indigenous community? Yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's like blackmailing everyone to vote yes. Yeah. yeah. Release the information. What does this body do? What is this separate arm, right? The first peoples are heavily recognized. Many emails you, re you receive from companies we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land. You go to a sporting mm -hmm. event, you, you have a, 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 you know, a country, call to country. Yes. What more recognition is supposed to be given? Why doesn't this money go right into the grassroots? Mm -hmm. Right? Into community education. You know, another thing which I would call, you know, racist is 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 having i think we spoke about that with joe another time about having that card what was that card called you oh that, basic card that basic card how why are you saying that you want to control what the indigenous people are, are purchasing uh -huh. <laughs> you know what i mean because you know uh, sadly they are saying you don't know what you want to what you need yeah. this is what you have to use your money for and in saying that, I think... Uh, uh, Isn't that why maybe they, they, some of the reasons why they would want their own sort of representation? Because if laws, are, if, if you're, you're passing laws or, or by laws like that, then what are we saying about you governing those type of people? And, or, okay. Yeah, but you see, if you see some of the places, right, where the, the referendum is heavily known, yeah. these are labor-held states. WA, the mm -hmm. previous uh, premier, won resoundingly where the opposition has got two members of parliament. Mm -hmm. But it's, according to the polling, it's over 60% no. Are you telling me the people who voted for Labour resoundingly on a federal level, on a state government level, would not agree to a Labour proposal? Yeah. It just right. it just makes you that, that we're not we're not not talking about the what some other people talk about racial divide dividing people by race. We're just talking about common sense. If a yeah. place has voted resoundingly for you federally mm -hmm. and <laughs> state government wide, but your proposal, which was the centerpiece of mm -hmm. your campaign, has mm -hmm. got a resounding no, according to polls. Polls may be fake, you know. Yes. Let's yes. just say if the polls align this way for the next uh, 30 days until mm -hmm. the referendum, something is not right. There's too much ambiguity about it. Yeah. So my question is, as a citizen, if you vote yes, why would you vote yes? If you vote no, why would you vote no? Yeah. If you can't answer that question, then... It's pointless. <laughs> but, but but unfortunately, uh, everyone who is of voting, who is eligible to vote, will have to choose whether yes or no. <laughs> yeah. So that's why the no people are choosing the no, because that's why if, 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 if someone says to recognize the first people, every mm -hmm. in their workplace, there's the NIDOC week. Yes. Right? <laughs> Another week of uh, indigenous uh, 
recognition. Um, work emails. Yeah. They recognize that. Right? <laughs> Every time you land in a plane. In a plane, there's The first words that are, speaking, are spoken are. Yeah. So what more <laughs> recognition is needed? Right? The sorry apology was done. Mm-hmm. Uluru statement was done. Yep, and uh, the Oluru is cut off from uh, visitors now, from tourists. You know, what more, you know? And mm-hmm. this is us speaking as other indigenouses from another country which was colonized mm-hmm. and received independence in the last 40 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, indigenous people have been recognized in this country since the 1960s. Yes. So, uh, is there any need for a separate body or we need to have them as equal to everybody so that there is no that segregation and racial discrimination? Yeah, they should be equal. You should say they should be eligible, not a quota. Mm -hmm. The best indigenous people should Mm -hmm. be in the parliament. Yes, by merit. By merit. Mm -hmm. But so, anyway, we'll, we'll continue to watch this space. As I said, the polling has changed in the last few weeks, and uh, apparently Anthony Albanese is coming back from an international trip because this was his centerpiece, <laughs> one of his centerpiece promises at uh, the last election. So I think that's the the issue, particularly with uh, you know left-wing politics. They, they play on the emotions. But when people are now living the day to day of a of a left wing government, they realize, oh, we voted for <laughs> for trouble. <laughs> I think we, we I think we've seen this from all the movements, the Bolsheviks. You know, they mm-hmm. they wanted the Bolsheviks. What did they get? What did they what they got? They got their Stalin's and all their yeah. things post the Bolsheviks. But what 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 was started? It was an emotive thing. So. Watch out at <laughs> left wing politics. <laughs> yeah. And I think also we need to have people uh you know comment what they understand in the comments there, what they understand about what the voice is about. Yeah. It might shed light to others, including myself. Yeah, so leave your comments on our YouTube, uh on our Twitter spaces, on our Facebook. And yeah, let's just have a discussion about the voice. Is, does, would this benefit the indigenous community or it's another bureaucracy of government spending, uh, people put in these positions who are politicians for political lifers, um, people with quarter indigenous blood, a third indigenous blood. <laughs> you know, let's have a discussion of these uh, topics. All right. Sticking on politics, uh, in Zimbabwe, there was the cabinet announcements. <laughs> um, some commentators have said this is the worst um, cabinet in uh, political history. Uh, family, friends, uh, supposed lovers in the politics. Uh, what are your thoughts about the cabinet? Um, you see uh, Vice President Chiwenga, His Excellency is just Vice President. He doesn't have a portfolio anymore. Um, you've got people returned in there. Uh, some people who lost their their posts. Uh, you've got Jumutuli Mube, yeah. who lost his post, but he was made the minister. Um, does that sit right with you? Do you have to be in parliament to be a minister? Um, um okay. So the law, of, uh, I think, the law of the land is you have to be a, a sit current sitting member of parliament for you to be a minister. Um, but they. They have, I think, I'm not sure how many seats that the president has got leeway to choose um, who he wants for that role. Um, so that's why you find uh, the likes of Mutuling has, has gone back in. Um, that's 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 on that free ticket from directly from the president's power. So was this an amendment post 2000 when uh, Zanu PF started to lose some of its prominent candidates? I, th- I think this came in, uh, what was the last election before 2018? 2013? Or yeah. didn't they come in the 2002-2008 election period? I believe it was the 2002-2008 election period when yeah. Mugabe lost some of his prominent uh, supporters. Yeah. 
And yeah, you could be right. That's when that's when they started putting in these uh, provincial ministers as well. Yeah. So they can boost our... <laughs> right. For a nation of 14 million, right? Do we need yeah. all these parliamentary uh, parliamentary members and all these uh, ministers? Portfolios. Yeah. Portfolios. I don't, I don't think so. Like, um, for start, I don't know why we need a provincial minister, to be honest, when... Uh, Let alone the veteran, uh, you know, affairs. Mm, mm, mm. It's yeah. been long since, you know... <laughs> Uh, the is war it, is ended. Is it is is it for uh, the, his excellency to put his uh, favorite people, uh, his attack dogs, uh, particularly the minister? Uh, what's his name? That's why he puts the people that um, I suppose he um, he's uh, thanking for their loyalty. If you look you at mean, most of those, you mean people, for the for the veterinary veterinaries. Veterans, uh, what you call it? <laughs> veterans. <laughs> veterans. Veterans. Yeah. For the veterans. There is, I think it's Chris Mchangwa. Yeah, Veterans uh, of Liberation Struggle, right? For yes. Liberation oh, struggle. oh, Chris Mchangwa is there. Yeah, yeah Christopher Mchangwa, that's the Minister for that's Veterans me. Liberation. Ah, so, so all his hard work is paying, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll, go through the, we'll go through the list. So Defense and Security is Opa Muchungiri Kashiri. Mm-hmm. Energy um, and power is Edgar Moyo. Primary, who, do, do we know who that is? Edgar Moyo? I don't know. I think some people who voted uh, or uh, his supporters. Mm-hmm. Primary and secondary e- education, T. Moyo. Uh, finance and investment promotion, Muntuli Ngube. Foreign affairs is Frederick uh, Shawa. Uh, mines is Zemu Soda. Uh, home affairs is Kazembe Kazembe. Uh, sports and arts is Kirsty Coventry. Uh, Stembiso Nyoni is industry and commerce. Um, ICT is the one which raised a few eyebrows. Yeah. Uh, Tenda Ma, Mavetera. Uh-huh. Youth Empowerment, uh, Tino uh, Machakaire. Uh, tourism, Barbara, Barbara Rodzi. I don't know who that is. And then, of course, Justice, you've got Ziambe, Ziambe. And the Muchangwa family, both husband and wife. Uh, mm. Both in there, I think Muchangwa has been moved to women's affairs. I think she didn't do well in information. <laughs> yeah, well. in the information portfolio, she didn't do well. So, and then July, I think they shuffled. They shuffled over the the whole ministry. I think. I think. Um, who was the that guy? Uh, <laughs> what's his name? He was taken out of that. Uh, Minister of wasn't it secretary uh, secretary yeah Nick Mangwana Nick Mangwana yeah he was taken out after posting excessively on Twitter uh, defending them uh, and they were moved across so look as I said it's a it's a <laughs> it's a cabinet ministry of no vision uh, very disappointing very lame another five years of hocus pocus uh, yeah I mean we. Uh, most of the people they... there's no merit in most of the appointments exactly like uh, how secure are we with uh with our information and technology if we have someone without the merit to actually protect our cyberspace exactly they're not they're not uh, especially I, I feel a ministry like uh, like ICT needs a professional in I, ICT you yes. need somebody who knows what they're doing. What What's credentials it? does this? Uh, what does this gender? lady have? Yeah. yeah. What, what What does she have? Yeah. Just like what they've done with the health now, they have reversed. It was Chiwenga then, with mm-hmm. no medical background. Now I think the the doctor is it Mombeshora. Uh, I didn't see this on the list. I'm looking for health. the health one. Is should be Doctor Mombeshora. Let me check it out. Uh yeah. The doctor, yeah, because if someone has a background in a medical field, yeah, it doctors, makes it, yeah. Yeah. it it makes it easy to make sound decisions when you are developing that you know portfolio. Mm-hmm. Because if you if you don't know, how do you know that uh, a, the orderlies or the cleaners are one of the most important people in the hospital? Yeah, yeah, but when we it didn't comes say that, to but, COVID, but, but Doctor Parinato was put through during the Mugabe regime, yeah, and, the, and things deteriorated. You know, right? Yes, we might say <laughs> under Munangagwa's regime things deteriorated, <laughs> but these things started over Mugabe, and where Doctor yeah. Parinato, he was a doctor, 
So yes. <laughs> you can have but, uh, but you they... can't you can't compare you can't compare the Chiwenga and uh, the Parirenya Twa era because with Parirenya Twa era you find that uh, even the teaching hospitals were still equipped properly and people were educated in a way that uh, they were uh, international standards and qualities of uh, hospital services even though they were going down slowly uh, the going down was a uh, you know exacerbated by the sanctions when yeah. sanctions started that's when the whole thing started to decline significantly we we need to you know to also take note of all those you know levers that can change you know the system but uh, with parrenya twa he he did very well uh, i know he was against some of the professions and uh, he was not recognizing pro some professions as much as they wanted recognition but with uh, chiwenga he was a blunt knife saying if a doctor does not want is not happy with their salary they should just walk away we can always find soldiers to come and do the job or we can get people to do the job not taking into account that if those uh, personnel are the key elements of you know who to sustain the uh, health system of zimbabwe so if you don't have the understanding it's you are starting from a very low point but if you've got the understanding and the heart to bring the health system you know uh, you might have the desire to see the health system flourish but if you don't have the idea uh, that's a double uh, you know blunt edged sword you know but if you've got an idea uh, you've got a starting point yeah yeah i think i i hear what you what you're saying um that at least it takes takes someone who knows what it is mm-hmm. to appreciate what it is yeah. um for 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 you to say mm, guys this this hospital is looking bad you you yeah. know what a good hospital looks like or you know at least you know what uh, a doctor at a hospital is looking yeah. for you know it's like taking me and making me a defense minister and if a war breaks out i'm under my chair <laughs> you're the you know, first one to <laughs> to get on a plane and fly out <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, moving on with the, with the, with 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 the, the the people in parliament what what, what do you think of having three mananga was in, in 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 the parliament two of whom have been made deputy ministers um i'm not, i'm not very sure again like is we this, said of is, is, is this not what they were campaigning against in 2017 when they say that mugabe is now turning it into a family business yeah 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 and yeah. Uh, I, I mean and, look lo, lo and behold six years later he's doing that i mean look, credit, credit to credit to i think it's strong guy his son he actually won a seat so credit to him he, he did that well according to the law he's a he's an mp so he it's, and the it's, other, did the other two win the seat i haven't done that full research um i don't know where these guys are coming from the the um, i think it's the david Munangagwa, i think I don't know where he's coming from. He's, uh, he's, uh, or is it Dave? I, I'm not really sure of the names here, but I know one of them is a nephew and one of them is a son. Um, the son, I think, is the one who ran for a seat and he won his seat. So he is in parliament. Um, and what are his previous one, credentials to be promoted to deputy finance minister? Wouldn't you no go idea. through a, a secretary position or a, a government whip position? show your credentials you see this is the question people are asking you know yeah. if it's on merit let it be on merit um not because yeah. you are uh, the the, <laughs> the president's son because basically um the supposed technocrat who was you know well renowned came all the way from switzerland he's the supposed minister but the the son of the president you know that's a <laughs> Let's let's be realistic and have a bit of common sense, you know. It's, it's it almost feels like uh, he's Undermine. coming in to be taught yeah. how to how to do things, because there's a lot of bureaucracy that goes on in these things, and obviously he can't just come in and be a minister. So he has to be taken in as a deputy 
for him to, to grooming, understand eh? exactly grooming a lot of grooming that will be happening. So what's there. going to happen now? Because uh, according to the constitution, the law of the land, this is Munangagwa's last term, and he doesn't have two thirds majority. So how are they going to change the constitution? I have no idea. They might not change the constitution now because they are setting up their people in, uh, you know, in strategic positions. So that when uh, ZANU PF takes the next elections and they put their leader there who wins, he, they've got a bit of security along the, you know, <laughs> strategic positions. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Um, also, just to note as well that one of his sons is also, um, is I think, is now a major in the army or something, a colonel or something like that in the army as well. So they they looking pretty spread out in that. Um... It's it's strategic positioning, as Joe has alluded. Mm. Um, yeah, let's see how we go. But look, commentators, even me now looking deeper into this, there's no future. There's no young people. It's all you know, <laughs> you know. Yes, there, there's a, a bit more women, which is good. Uh, women into parliament, but. If, you know, now the questions are asked and, you know, there may be crude questions which are in, based on social commentary, social media. Uh, have these women entered on merit or through other means and purposes, which discredits uh, the qualities of, of good women to come into politics? Yeah. So let's watch this space uh, again. It's another five years of <laughs> Zano PF will be 2028. How many years is that now? 48 years, nearly 50 years. Some people will be celebrating their 50th birthday with Zano PF in power. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. see how we go. So, our, our here, if good things happen through this government, we'll make the announcements. If there's bad announcements, you know, we'll put it there. Leave your comments um, on, the, on YouTube. Leave your comments. Uh, where you find ever you wherever you get your podcasts on our Facebook page, even on Twitter. Let us know what your thoughts are on this uh, cabinet. Um, is it the best for Zimbabwe? It doesn't bring change to Zimbabwe. Or we're going to hear the same rhetoric we've heard for the last 25 years about sanctions, 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 and more sanctions. Um, let us know on Amagen's podcast. So now we wrap up as we are wrapping up Amagen's podcast. Let's have a bit of fun, eh? I was <laughs> an article popped up uh, about Meghan Markle uh, and the royals. Uh, apparently, you know, uh, <laughs> in our pre-production meeting, we're talking. Is this just the media looking for something to talk about? Currently, uh, Prince Harry, uh, he's in Germany for the Invictus Games, uh, Invictus Games tour in Germany on his own. And Meghan Markle was spotted at a U.S. fast food spot while Prince Harry kicks off the Invictus Games Tour in Germany on his own. Um, does this really need to be a headline? I know maybe the Invictus Games is his passion, but does she really need to be at every Invictus Games? Yeah, it's almost as though people expect them to always be um, side by side. But look, man, they, just like any other couple, sometimes uh, the guy's got to do his own thing. Um, and uh, the lady's got to stay where she stays doing her own thing. So I don't really know whether that um, is um, news because um, they're the royals, but uh, it's, it's quite interesting that, uh, you know, people would pay attention <laughs> to every move that they make. Yeah. Uh, for, even if they go to the bathroom, yeah. be like Prince Harry went to the bathroom. But yeah. <laughs> he stayed two yeah. minutes longer. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, you, Tinas, you are definitely right because um, I was going through this uh, article from uh, Seven News, uh, and uh, the title was "Megan, you know, a Duchess of Sussex makes big move amid Prince Harry separation." I think it was just a clickbait. It was yeah. nothing, nothing about separation was in the article. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was clickbait. <laughs> it was clickbait. So yeah, I don't yeah. think these guys are, they, they, are, they, they, are separating anytime soon. But uh, you know, we'll just watch the space. But uh, the media does blow things out of proportion. It was some of us who were like sitting on the edge, saying, "Oh, what's happening?" You know, 
Yeah, yeah. Because when I saw the article, I was like, "Oh, is there trouble in paradise?" But when you dig deeper, man, <laughs> um, don't they uh, don't they have a young child together as well? Uh, yeah, they have two kids, right? You know, what if you know he's? They've just decided, look, you know, this trip is not worth the kids traveling. We'll, I'll stay back with the kids. You know, other couples do that. Uh, you know, <laughs> some we've traveled sometimes without our spouses or partners or girlfriends. Uh, yeah, no one has written a headline about it so i think it was a slow news day on news.com <laughs> in channel seven um and yeah, you guys you see that on instagram uh kanye west's partner with a sheer outfit walking down the street did you see that no oh. i missed that one i didn't see that one hey, what's what the happened? what's the deal <laughs> 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 uh, bianca uh he says that uh, Kanye West's wife Bianca uh, Sensori can't stop wearing naked outfits made for uh, made from see-through tights. So all her outfits are like basically see-through tights. You know, she just walks broad daylight. Everything is all hanging out. You know, so <laughs> Talk, talking about the, I, I don't know what this Kanye man. This Kanye is just grabbing the headlines left, right, and center. Because um, I think it was a week or so ago they were in um, Venice, and um, he was seen with his butt crack out, and um, uh, Bianca s- seemed to be doing some lewd actions. Uh, it almost suggested uh, that they were she was actually giving him uh, some oral. Um, and then news then later came out that they were banned from from uh, ever taking these taxes, uh, the famous taxes in 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 in, in Venice. It, yeah. Like what what are they doing? <laughs> now he, you know with Kanye, he's like uh, Trump. He knows how to work the media. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of working. some of these things yeah. he does it on purposely. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> to get tang. Uh, was was that tang wagging. wagging and all yeah. that stuff? Didn't he recently have a picture with Elon Musk and uh, him uh, having a picture? Um, just uh, oh yeah, that no, that was a twenty twenty two picture. But again, you know, he was reinstated recently on Twitter by uh, Elon Musk after the ban. So look, he he looks for you know. Uh, popularity <laughs> in all the weird pa- all the weird places eh <laughs> and all the weird ways <laughs> all the weird ways man but look he's yeah. look he, going back to his music you know he's to me is criminally underrated he's a musical genius oh yeah definitely uh but again because of the way he likes to grab headlines that's overshadowed the talent he's had so yeah, man, gentlemen, thank you so much for another week of Ama Gents. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have a chat. So leave your comments, uh, like, uh, subscribe, share Ama Gents podcast to your friends, family. Uh, we'll be here for another week of Ama Gents podcast shortly. And also go on our YouTube page. We'll be having some fun shorts of some of our productions uh, from Ama Gents podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have an awesome week.